Give it up for Wentz. Good evening. So this is McDougal United Church downtown. Uh, it was built in 1910. It's the home of the very first Protestant Christian church denomination in uh, Alberta. It's also the home of the very first concert hall in Edmonton, home of the very first symphony. It was the first home of the Edmonton Opera. And a year and a half ago, I knew none of this. So this is more my style. I do communications and marketing for an IT company. So my whole life is shiny things, new gadgets, the latest software, what the latest trends are. Never have I really been involved in anything historic. The closest I get is I've got a thing for old books. So I can tell you about the designers in Edmonton. I can tell you about the IT industry. I can tell you about the Bruce Peel Special Collections Library at the University of Alberta. But other than that, never have I been involved in anything related to the history of the city. So, how do you accidentally end up doing this? Uh, first step is you join a choir. So, this was also an accident. I mentioned to a friend that my son had joined the school choir, and they said, oh, well, I've sung with Coca Pelli my whole life, and we just started a kid's choir. Maybe he'd be interested. So my kid got in a choir. I watched that for three years from the audience, and next thing you know, they have an adult choir, I joined it, I'm in a choir now. <laughs> so, next step uh, is you're in a choir. Uh, the next step I think everyone will appreciate, the next step is coffee. And I'm talking ahead of the slide. So, I'm at a rehearsal one night, Thursday night, really tired. Someone looks at me and goes, hey, I think there's coffee downstairs. I'm like, great. I go downstairs, the reason there's coffee downstairs is because the Cocopelli Choir Association is having a board meeting there. They see me come in the room and they go, hey, we were just talking about you. We have a vacancy on the board, would you be interested? <laughs> Next thing you know, that's me down there as the president of the Cocopelli Choir Association, <laughs> introducing a concert and explaining why there's no bathroom facilities in McDougal Church and how this place is this amazing building that is perfect for choir singing, amazing sight lines, nothing like it in Western Canada. Then a year and a half ago, all the headlines are about how they're about to tear this down so they can sell it and make a $7 million condo tower or some such thing. The very next day, I get a call from someone at the church saying, we don't want this to happen, we need help. You're one of our biggest tenants, we practice there every week. Would you be interested in a letter of support? Something to say, yeah, we want to keep this building. Absolutely. So next thing you know, I am helping found the Friends of McDougal Society to rally support for saving this building downtown. So what happened in the last year and a half was letter writing campaigns, talking to politicians, there was a provincial election, which was brilliant, because we actually managed to basically throw a big enough parade that the politicians wanted to be in the front of it, heading into an election. And we managed to get historical designation for the building, um, funding from the city and from the province to do a bunch of really necessary restoration work. And so if you go downtown now, this is what you're gonna see, is over the last two, um, two months, the scaffolding has been going up, and we've started doing the restoration of the church. And so it's an ongoing project. Next step is going to be more fundraising because the work is never done on an older building. But the part that I really wanted to talk about here is the fact that one of the reasons why I think we managed to uh, pull this off in a city that really has a bad reputation for maintaining historic buildings a lot of mysterious fires, a lot of buildings that are declared historic and just degrade to the point where, oh, I guess we can't do anything except tear it down. The thing that I found with ending up in this project is it wasn't just me bringing all this choir world that seven years ago I knew nothing about in Edmonton. It was an artist community. There's painters that paint out of that building. There are the historic societies. People go, oh, so you must be involved with the Edmonton Historical Society. Still haven't met any of those people. I don't know anything about it. But it's this sort of reaching sideways that has become 
the thing that I found very interesting about this project. I'm born and raised in Edmonton, and I've always had this weird impression that Edmonton is kind of really siloed. We're the city of, uh, the, we're a festival city, but the people who go to Folk Fest every year probably don't go to Heritage Days. The Heritage Days guys never go to the Fringe Festival. The Fringe Festival never goes to the Anime Fest. So we sort of have these things that we're very passionate about up and down, but we don't actually go reach sideways and go, this whole city's got all this cool stuff that we do. And it's what actually allowed us to save this building. The historical people and the choir people and the drama people and the Edmonton Opera people and all these people said, no, this is important for our city, even though it's not necessarily the thing that we're doing right now. And so I'd like to introduce or throw out a challenge to everyone that uh, this person I met at a Edmonton Public Library City of Learners workshop, we sort of conjured up during this workshop. And basically, we had to map out what a habitat of learners would look like for the city of Edmonton. And a lot of the themes were that there were these things that we loved, but none of the interconnections. So this was my little model of what it should look like. Lots of strings and hubs and everything. And so we concocted this plan where what we were going to do was invite five people who would never go to a choir concert to come to a choir concert. The deal was they had to invite me to some weird thing that I would never go to, and also four other friends to go try out that thing. So that the idea is more accidents. The more I think that we can get people doing things across these lines of all the things that you guys are interested, the better it'll be. And so my last uh, little bit is I'm inviting all of you to come paint the scaffolding on this Sunday between noon and four. Hope to see you there and maybe you can accidentally do something for the city as well.